All right, guys, this is Jaime and my assistant, the Airto from Chops and Chops. I'm, I'm, I. Today, we're gonna be focusing on the head and arm choke, AKA the head and arm triangle. All right, so head and arm triangle is a choke where, or strangulation where I isolate my partner's head and my partner's arm. So one head and one arm. They have two arms, so we gotta get one out of the way. Uh, I've managed to isolate my partner's head, my partner's arm. I'm gonna push it across my body so that it's on the same side. So the same arm that's controlling the head, I'm gonna use that arm and shoulder to control the arm. So I push it, slide it across my chest to chest, and what I look for is to get past the elbow. So I need to, ooh, make my way past the elbow. So as you can see, one arm is holding this head and his arm. Uh, one more point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on isolating the arm that's close to me, the near arm, not the far arm. I wouldn't want to isolate this way because that's more traditional side control. So same side, here. All right, now, I want you to think of the head and arm triangle like a regular triangle choke like we do with our legs. Uh, one part of his neck, I'm cutting off one of his arteries with my arm, right? Very big and muscular. The opposite one is gonna be cut off not by my body, but by his body. So I'm taking his own shoulder, all of this meat, here, and I'm gonna just jam it into his neck. I'm closing the artery here, right? A couple of seconds should do it. My partner's gonna go sleepy pie. Here we go. That's enough. That's all it takes, almost effortless. What I see a lot of people doing is that the name is a little misleading. It's not a head and arm choke, it's a head and shoulder choke, right? So what happens often is that people will isolate the head, they'll press on the artery on the bicep side, that's great. But then what they do is that they push down here on the tricep. So in a way, I'm almost crushing my partner's arm into his own head. Not comfortable, but it's not gonna put him to sleep and that's the ultimate goal. So an easy way to defend an incorrect head and arm choke is for my partner just to take his lat and pull his shoulder down. There we go, all of this space here, all of this space, I can fit my whole hand. So I'm gonna squeeze hard and let's see if I can get him. So my partner drops his shoulder, right, to defend it. He opens up his artery and I'm gonna squeeze. And all I'm doing is burning my arms out. I've seen a lot of people try to come down. They try to walk the clock, you know, get creative ways of closing the choke. But I think the easiest one is to just find the shoulder and push it into the neck. So what I tend to do is, once I've isolated the head and the arm, I'm gonna sink my weight all the way down to the floor. So I'm as flat as possible. I've isolated the head and the arm. I'm getting my chest close to the floor because look, his shoulder is here. This is the space that I wanna take. I don't wanna take up the space up here on his arm. So I go close, 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 close. That's it, as close as I am. I'm on the, I'm on the floor, my tummy's on the floor, my chest is a little bit, a little bit up. But most importantly, I can feel I can feel his shoulder here next to my chest. So that's what I wanna do. Remember, I wanna isolate his head and arm. I wanna push the artery with this bicep. The opposite one, it's his own shoulder. If my partner puts the shoulder down, too much space, right? I can squeeze all I want, too much space. Here we go. I come down and I'm gonna cut the angle. So if my partner is over here, I'm just going to whoop, switch my hips, see? My hips are this way, I switch my hips, so my hips are almost facing him. Now if I look forward, I'm facing my partner's shoulder. And any body part that I can feel, I can touch his arm, his shoulder, I'm gonna use that to press. So in my, in, in my case, my chest is right next to his shoulder, so that's all I'll do. I'll just puff my chest out like Superman, puff my chest out, and then drive his shoulder into his neck. Almost effortless, yeah? So I just tighten it, and I'm not squeezing my arms, I'm just puffing my chest up, here we go. That's it. Head and shoulder, head and shoulder. Couple of positions where I can set it up. For example, mount. I'm going to, one more time, isolate my arm, my partner's arm to one side. So maybe with one arm, the choking arm, 
I want to put in between his shoulder and his head, it's easier for me to drop my chest and then swing this arm inside. All I have to do is just get under the head, cup the head, boom, I made it. So the arm is done. Sorry, the head is done. The tricky part is the arm. What am I gonna do here? I just need to bring his elbow up and across. So with this opposite side, one more time, we use the ridge of our wrist to carve underneath the shoulder. I might be able to use my leg for help, but I'll bring it up. Both head and arm are up. I'm just gonna move the elbow to the side. So if I'm strong enough, I can just chuck it over. If my partner's pretty big, I'll do the finger crawl, slowly, slowly, slowly. Once the elbow is past the midpoint, I'll just use my head, my neck to take over and I'm tight here. He's, he's not gonna get the shoulder back. I cannot let him get the shoulder back. Yeah, just jump over to side control. Right, and like we talked about before, I need to cut the angle. So my hips are going this way. I wanna press the shoulder, I'm just gonna switch my hips. That's it, so now when I press, I'm pressing this way, towards the shoulder. I'm not squeezing the arm, I'm finding the shoulder, so where is it? It's right here next to my chest. I'm gonna use my chest to push. Bada bing.